five ways. So again, today's topic is five ways to build our list. Guys, our list, and I said this on yesterday's, one of my uh, scopes yesterday, um, if you're not building the list, you're wrong. I'm just sorry. I, I mean, I hate to even say it so bluntly, but it, it, it's exactly what it is. And feel free to tweet that if you want to. Kim Gar said, if you're not building a list, uh, you are wrong. It's the lifeblood of your, uh, your business. Uh, about 85% of my sales are direct, directly attributable to my list. Um, I would go so far as, and this is another tweetable moment, uh, is to say that I believe that the um, money is in the list for sure. I mean, everybody's probably heard that, right? The money is in the list, um, but the money and the relationship is in the list. That's how you uh, continually, um, you know, build out value to people that might not ever run into you again. So it's important. Thank you, Marketing Ricky, for sharing. And thanks for the comments on my hair. I appreciate that. Um, so building a list is incredibly important, uh, and yet so many business owners don't slow down long enough uh, and they don't focus on it. For me, that's one of my key metrics. It's like, you know, we have goals for every month, uh, you know, to make sure that we're meeting those goals. Building a list is a, a core uh, part of our, um, our strategy. And you'll see me doing it here on Periscope. You'll see me doing it on Facebook, on Twitter, uh, all the social platforms I leverage to build my list because we don't own our Periscope followers, our Facebook fans, um, our Twitter followers, or Instagram. Instagram followers. We have to move those people to a place where we can, we do own. That's our real estate and our list is uh, huge. So um, Angie, it depends on where your business is, you know, as it relates to what CRM, uh, you know, if you're brand new and just getting started out, you know, a MailChimp or AWeber, I prefer AWeber, that's what I started out with. Um, I'm currently using Infusionsoft and I think if you truly are serious about, you know, funnels in particular, you need a more robust uh, platform, but some people aren't ready for that yet, you know, so I think it depends. So my first tip though to you as it relates to Periscope specifically, and I wanted to really focus on, you know, Periscope um, strategies that every one of you guys can use. So this one in particular is something that each and every one of you guys can use. And yet a lot of you guys probably aren't doing it yet. Um, in many cases, uh, you may know that you're, you can put your link in your bio now or a link in your bio. So you may be using your regular website, right? Um, but you can absolutely use that, that link, that opportunity uh, inside of your bio for a link to your freemium, you know, to where people actually opt in to get something of value instead of just leveraging your website. Um, uh, so my suggestion to you is if you're serious about leveraging Periscope um, for list building, uh, you can actually change that. Now, when you change it, you have to make sure you include the HTTP, uh, et cetera. It has to be the full link. And when you change it initially, you're like, well, is this working? Because you can't, you can't test it. It doesn't work for you, but it does work for everybody else. It is clickable when somebody looks at your bio. So you want to make sure that you leverage that space. You know, a lot of people will tell you to do it on Twitter or Facebook. Well, why wouldn't we do it here on Periscope as well? So use that. Uh, you can use a bit.ly Carolina, Carolina. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Um, and, um, and absolutely, I mean, I don't see that there's an, um, you know, a, a negative to using a Bitly because most of us are familiar with Bitly's. We have, um, you know, we, we feel comfortable using them. We don't think we're going to someplace that's going to, you know, take us to a bad, you know, bad site. So um, I, I think it's fine to use a Bitly. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Marcy. Uh, we still got to get together, Marcy. Ta message me. Okay, so first tip was, you know, link to your bio, guys. Huge. Use that space. Okay, the second one is do a scope. Um, you can either, and, and this is a twofold tip uh, that re basically revolves around the same thing. Um, inside of Periscope, um, I mean, you could do a scope where you uh, introduce the value of your freemium. So I'm going to give you an example. 
and I and I'm just going to basically listen to what I say and then emulate or do something similar. So, um, for example, you guys, I have a jumpstart guide for Periscope, and I know a lot of you are probably not really um, sure if you want to leverage Periscope yet for your business. And if you're not, this might give you some inside knowledge. You know, go grab it. It's at you know kimgars.com forward slash Periscope 101. Um, you can grab my free ebook. Love to have uh, you know give you a little bit of value. So that's one way where you could highlight the value of your freemium, um, and or you could you you could share your freemium in every one of your scopes, but in a way that doesn't come across super salesy or pushy. So just like I did when I introduced myself at the front side of this scope, you know, I'll I say you know I try to give a, some uh, lend uh, some credibility to who I am, so people know should I even be paying any attention to this person? Do they have any do they have any knowledge that's valuable to me? So I introduce myself, uh, and I usually either share my freemium or the the Periscope course. In other words something that is value-based to those that are listening and yet I don't sell it, I don't push it, I'm just mentioning it. So you could do that on every one of your scopes as a way to give value back to the, your community. Um, you know, each of us should have a freemium if we don't as a business owner. Again, that's one of those things that, you know, most people, guys, and I'm just curious, I'm just going to pick your brain for a second, literally. How many of you guys go to someone's website um, you know, just a regular person, not necessarily a big brand, and uh, opt in to get their newsletter. I mean, who wants more email, right? Does anybody do that? Just hand up. Okay, so so maybe a few, but most of us are like newsletter. No, I don't want somebody's newsletter. But yet, if you show up uh, in your site, somebody comes to your website and you have a sidebar that says, you know, hey, here's something for free that's going to be, it's going to solve a pain point for you. And um, and all you have to do is trade your email in it in exchange for it. People are way more likely to do that because they don't think of it in the same frame. You know, they don't think, oh my goodness, I'm going to get flooded with email uh, because I've opted into this. So it's just one of those things. It's a it's again, it's a psychology thing. It, it's the same thing essentially. I mean, they are getting on your email list, but you're not like saying, hey, join my my newsletter and not giving them anything in return. So so that's two is introduce the value of your freemium here on Periscope and do it routinely guys in other words don't just do it once in a while you know make it a part of your strategy to where you can share it uh, you know maybe not every scope but certainly once in a while you want to share it and let people know that you have something value based that might help them and then the third one is build a community around your brand with some special content offers. So, um, for example, and this is kind of the same example that I just leveraged. Um, if you go to perryschool.training, um, you will get my jumpstart guide, which I just mentioned in the previous tip, but you will also uh, have access to some of the, the things that I have planned for Perry School going forward. So, you know, again, it's, it's, I'm building a community around the hashtag Perry School. Some of you may uh, be familiar with Tag Tribes or hashtag Perry Girl uh, or Perry Girls. So those are communities that are specific to those, um, those, um, you know, Mark Shaw does Perry, I'm sorry, uh, Mark Shaw does Tag Tribes. I'm not sure who's running Perry Girls. I think there's a, a, a group of girls, a group of ladies uh, that are running that. So, but, but again, you're building their list, guys. And no disrespect to them. That's a, it's a brilliant idea. I'm just saying leverage the same idea for you. Um, you know, build your own community, your own uh, hashtag strategy, and then give value around that hashtag so that, you know, people are going to opt into it, they're going to support it, just like they do with Tag Tribes or Perry Girls or, you know, here we are with Perry School, right? It's the same concept. Um, you know, it does take a little bit more work, but you know, leverage, build your own uh, community to where, you know, you have access to uh, an opportunity to build your list. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm saying don't join those other communities, not at all. Um, and I'm not, you know, absolutely not. But um, 
it's still, you know, what, what do you want for your business? And I think that's the part that you have to decide. Is this a viable, you know, tip for you? Is it something that you would want to do? Um, but building your own community is incredibly important and um, you want to make sure that you're stepping into that opportunity. So tip number three is build community around your brand. So, um, you know, like I said, you can go to perryschool.training and um, that's kind of my tribe. Um, you know, the kind of thing that I'm trying to use to build my list and yet give value back in a way that's free versus, you know, because some people aren't sure yet. They don't know if they want a, a full-blown Periscope course, right? So this is a way, again, to build some community around your brand. And then tip number four is host a contest or a giveaway using either your fan page or a landing page. So traditionally, as contests or giveaways have been attached to um, opting in in some way, right? You have to give your email address and that's how people uh, select the winners. Um, now this does take a little bit more, you know, uh, a skill set or a little bit more of a, um, um, what's a word I'm looking for? Not necessarily skills, but a little bit more prep. That's the word I'm looking for. So you could uh, put a, an opt-in page on your website. You could put it on your fan page. I love doing the fan page simply because that's what I call a twofer. You know, why why not uh, take advantage of of, uh, of double marketing value if you leverage your Facebook page? So what I mean by that is you can build out an app on your Facebook page. It's essentially a landing page. You highlight what you're giving away or your contest, and then you um, you know people opt in to win. So that's a great way to, um, and while they're there, hey, you may get them to like your fan page. You may get engagement on your fan page. So um, that's kind of, you know, again, like it's, it's, it's a two, two for marketing tip there. Um, but you don't have to use your Facebook page. I'm just leverage, I'm just letting you know that that's an option. Um, there's tools out there that make it easy. Tools like heyo.com, um, tabsite.com is another great uh, resource. Um, and again, you can build out those landing pages. If you don't know what a landing page is, it's basically just a, a place that people go to that, again, highlights what you're giving away and, you know, they opt in to join uh, or to, for an opportunity to win. Um, leadpages.net is a great resource for kind of a plug and play system. They do integrate with a lot of the, the mail systems out there like MailChimp and Aweber, et cetera. So that's a, a, a way, a resource for you if you don't have this in place already. Mail, um, the two, um, goodness, I said several things already. Okay, so heyo.com and tabsite.com for landing pages on your Facebook page. Or those are great resources. Um, and then leadpages.net are awesome for just great, um, you know, landing pages that you can put on your website. So tip number four was, you know, use the landing pages um, on your Facebook page or on your website to do uh, ho or to host a giveaway or a contest because people love to win. And there, it's again, it goes back to you're not saying come join my email list. You're giving them an opportunity to join your email list, unbeknownst to them in some ways, because you're again, it's an opportunity for them to win. And then um, tip number five, and I do have a bonus tip, so hang in there with us, guys. Tip number five is use your blog. Now, what does that mean? Okay, so it means that in most cases, um, we leverage our sidebars on our blog to share um, a freebie. You know, we usually highlight our freebie in the sidebar. If you're not doing that, I would encourage you to uh, implement that because when people come to your website, uh, you've kind of got a cap captive audience, but if you don't capture them while they're there, in other words, if they don't opt into your list, chances are they're not going to just bump into your content and they're certainly not going to get your newsletter or your email. Um, uh, um, that you send out routinely because you don't know who they are. You can't communicate with them once they've left. So it's really important to leverage your sidebar so that uh, with a freemium of some sort that's value-based to your ideal uh, client or your ideal customer so that you can capture them.
and then you have a consistent way to communicate with them consistently and build out that relationship and ultimately uh, when you have something to market you'll have somebody that you already know is interested in your products and services um, so leverage your sidebar so I'm going to give you another little tip how many of you guys have ever heard of the term content upgrade I'm just quickly this is like an inside tip guys kind of an inside tip I love lead pages too so Gail has heard of it Donna says no okay so and Amy, oh, some of you are good. I'm, I'm loving that you guys have, heard, some of you have heard of it and some of you haven't. So a content upgrade is essentially something, and I, I've leveraged this in other ways even here on Periscope where, like yesterday I did um, some tips on how to uh, grow your Facebook uh, presence and, and fan page when you have no budget. And I gave five tips and I said, hey, go back to my blog and there's five more tips. Um, so the the frame of reference though for your blog is if somebody is on your blog and they're reading your content it's amazing how many people would love to download that content and or would like additional tips uh, in that same avenue or that same lane if you had it set up and they'll opt in to get it so um, so there's a couple of ways that you could do it you could say here's five tips and if you would like five more tips then you know you could set it up and, and they would opt in to that um, if you have a, a piece of content that's themed um, you know depending like I'll give an example if I have Facebook content then I show an opt-in that at the bottom of that post that is more information around Facebook if it's Twitter related then I would have an opt-in at the bottom of that blog post that's uh, Twitter related so that they could continue to get more information from me um, but again they'll learn um, I mean they'll opt in to get that information and that's a great way to build your list um, so that again tip number five was use your blog all right who is ready like for a fantastic bonus tip fantastic bonus tip hands up <laughs> Teasers to get more information. Yes, great, Donna. All right, I see some IMs. I am, I am, me. All right, see some thumbs up. Okay, guys, I did, um, we've all heard of webinars, right? Just, I mean, I, yeah, so, I mean, that's nothing new. We all know, we've already, we've probably all been on webinars. Webinars have become a little boring for those of us who are on Periscope because Periscope is, again, so live and engaging and I can answer your questions, you can ask me questions, and it's all real time. So it's, it feels more, I don't know, real to me. So, um, so I did a, a tr what I call a traditional webinar style. In other words, I um, launched a webinar I said I'm going to host this webinar and I did the traditional webinar strategy you know signing up for the webinar um, we let people consume the content on a traditional webinar and I also periscoped it so I call that a scopinar um, I actually um, I trademarked it bought the domain and everything so my point is you guys could do a traditional training and um, you know have people opt in for that training and then uh, you know come on Periscope um, advertising it in advance let people know that you're doing it uh, and they'll opt in to uh, to come uh, you know be a part of that experience so you can do you can either make it off of Periscope uh, totally and not you know Periscope but I did both because I wanted you know to try to have the biggest community that I possibly could so I hosted it um, on you know the go to uh, webinar platform and then I periscoped it as well so again this is a, a traditional marketing medium or a traditional marketing method but um, I've tweaked it to be able to leverage it here on Periscope so that is a huge, I mean, we ended up with, um, I think we had about 3,000, just shy of 3,000 opt-ins for that webinar. And um, we had uh, about 3,000 people um, or almost 4,000 people live between the combined communities here on Periscope and uh, GoToWebinar. So this is a phenomenal way to build your list quickly, guys. 
no, it was not a private scope. It was public, you know, it was too many, too many people to invite privately. And I have done a blab a scope as well. That's a, Bruce, that's a great question. Um, yes, I have done that as well, where I will scope a blab. Or I'll have an interview on blab um, that you know I host here on Periscope. So yes, you can do all of those things. How can you use Periscope webinar for makeup artists? The same thing, you know, it's uh, the, the webinar piece is going to be a little bit more difficult. You're gonna have to use a platform that is front facing. In other words, like GoToWebinar, it wouldn't be a good platform, but maybe Zoom would be, because Zoom, you know, you people can see you. So hopefully that's been a great, and that was a great question. So what, I, I see the crafty cutie says wondering the same thing. I'm not sure what the original question is. Uh, did you see Facebook rolling out verification for pages so pages can use Facebook mentions? That is, that's great. I have, I'm excited to see that. That would be great. Because right now that's the holdup on Facebook, right? Is that not everybody has access to it. Uh, can you repeat how you captured email? Yes, Nicole, um, you have to have a, 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 a CRM or a, an email management system like MailChimp or AWeber. I've, I spent a lot of years with AWeber. I highly recommend them. Um, I have moved to a more robust platform, uh, which is Infusionsoft, but most people who are just starting do not need that uh, platform yet. Sure, you could do Google Plus Hangouts as well. How to link to lead pages. Um, you could just give a, a whatever your, your shortened link is here on Periscope. So I use Bitly a lot. Um, you know, I just take the, the original URL, shorten it, and then I have something that is, you know, you know, easy for people to remember and they can type it in. I'm so glad you're here, Curvy Executive. I love that username. That's so cool. Oh, thank you, Shelly. Thank you. Blab is a very unique platform. It's great for interviews, and uh, you know, it's kind of a, a four-square uh, look. So you can you need at least two people. Um, you know, I it, they don't have the community there that Periscope has yet. But, um, but it's a great platform. Glad it's helpful. So glad it's helpful. Sarah asked if, you know, if they buy the Periscope course, do you give members feedback on their scopes? Um, I do in my VIP course. Uh, in the regular course, I don't, no, because there's hundreds of them, and I would have to be watching hundreds of, uh, of scopes. So, um, but in my VIP course, I do. How many people do we have on the team? We have about nine total, um, you know, five uh, that are physically full time, and then you know we outsource some stuff as well. All right, let's see. How do I get a following like all of these business people on your scope right now? Um, well, one of the best ways, honestly, is to pop into scopes where um, people are serving your ideal client. Engage and add value to the conversation. You know, start building relationships with those people. Follow them. They'll, a good percentage of them will follow you back. Thanks, Sarah. Yes, engage, interacting is the key to building a community. Absolutely. All right, any last minute questions, guys? Any spe specific tips for targeting businesses versus, oh, I, I missed that, but I'm assuming you're saying businesses versus, I don't know who, but yeah, I mean, I target um, businesses all the time. So, you know, my goal is that's who my ideal client is. Um, so, you know, across the board, one of the best tips I just gave you was find people who are uh, serving your ideal client here on Periscope, get into their scopes, uh, you know, start engaging, adding value. Um, that's a great way to, to get started. 
Um, and alternative to lead pages, um, goodness, there's probably a ton of them, but I mean, you can actually build your own lead page. You, you don't have to have a platform to do it. You know, it's not that difficult to build your own, own lead page if you have, you know, a little bit of skill set. All right. All right, guys. Well, I am going to pop off, but I, I just want to let you guys know I appreciate you so much for spending a little bit of your time with me. Uh, and not only you guys, but also the replay viewers. I appreciate you guys so, so much. So take care. Have a great day. And I will probably see you guys a little bit later. Bye-bye.